In this exercise, we are going to work on an interesting structural problem. Indeed, we have three boreholes that are uh, sampled, and the samples are not oriented, uh, which means the north direction is not signed on the cores. Um, and those cores, okay, can be rotated inside the hole, okay, many times, and when they reach to the surface, you don't know exactly which side of the core was faced towards the north, right? So in this situation, if you have three different random samples from one uh, specific layer, you should be able to find out the, the strike and the dip of the bed. I'm going to sketch the situation here. Let's say here we have a... a okay, let's say here we have an Audric, right? and we are drilling down into okay in this layer down there and we have three uh, bore holes like that they are reaching to the same bed in different directions and they are getting some cores okay from from the same unit and these cores actually are taken okay to the surface and the same horizon actually is sampled in three different locations and these cores are not oriented cores so we have three cores like that all right that has no geographic sign on them so here i'm showing the cross cut and we have some you know bedding features on this sample right something like that the bedding looks like this the only thing that we know here is the top okay and here is the bottom of the of the core so uh, as you see these three plunge and the trend indeed gives us the orientation of these uh, boreholes uh, the angle between the, the bedding and the core, indeed this angle is here, right? And the angle of the pole of the bedding and the core, indeed, is pole of the bedding. Let's show this one as a pole of the bedding, right? And we know this is the axis of the ball hole, right? So this angle here, which I'm showing with alpha, Indeed, this one is here. Um, by knowing this information, we should be able to find the attitude of the bedding. Let's move on to the to the stereo net and see how we can work on this problem. All right, uh, let's first plot the plunge and the trend of the boreholes. Um, borehole one has a trend of north twenty west, uh, seventy degrees. Right, and that's going to be borehole 1. I'm going to label it with 1. And the second one is north 80 east. And it's plunging 76 degrees. So here is 80. 76 has to be here. Um, let's label it with 2. And the third one is south 30 west. And it's plunging uh, 68 degrees. So it has, this is 70, 68 is here and let's label it three. So, all right, um, what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna use another approach to get the answer. But if you look at to the book, uh, of structural analysis and synthesis mm, chapter 5 page 48 it has a nice explanation so you can use that one or you can follow what I'm doing here I believe the one that I'm providing here it's much simpler and short way of finding the answer so what we know is if I'm gonna illustrate one of these boreholes let's say this is borehole 1 and what happened indeed the sample 
uh, were taken down there and uh, the core actually reached the surface but on the way up indeed rotated many times and because it has no Norse sign on it when the core reaches to the earth's surface we don't know which side of the sample was facing to the north and based on that we could measure the structural elements uh, therefore we, 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 we need at least three samples and from there we can work on and find the uh, strike and the dip of the bed so uh, for sure for the rotational problems we need the pole of the element the pole is given uh, indeed the angle between the axes and the pole of the bedding for borehole one it's 50 degrees uh, what i'm gonna do i will place borehole one along the east west line right and i'm gonna count 50 degrees in different directions and i'm gonna put a sign there right because that's the angle between the borehole and the pole of the bedding right so 10 20 30 40 50 you can put a sign here you can count to the other direction as well 10 20 30 40 50 and you can also do along this great circle as well right because you should be able to count along the great circles as well so 10 20 30 40 50 so to the other direction 10 20 30 40 50 right so i can now i have four signs i should be able to draw a polygon like that but because the distance between these dots are far i need more dots right so what you can do right now one is uh, along the west east line uh, you can rotate your vellum paper until one gets to the other uh, gets on top of the other small circles now you should be able to count another 50 degrees to each direction right now sitting here i have three degrees here 13 23 33 43 and that is 50 right so we're gonna count in this direction this is 10 20 30 40 and 50 the other way around 10 20 30 40 50 this way 7 17 27 37 47 and 50 right you see now we have more dots you rotate your vellum paper again until that one reaches to the another great circle right when you place it here you see still the distance is 50 right so that's totally fine uh, you can either rotate and shift this dot every 10 degrees or you can place it anywhere you know along if it's sitting along you know one great circle that would be fine it doesn't matter you really rotate until you get to the bold lines so the one here um, it's sitting just here I'm going to uh, count 50 degrees to each side so this is 3 uh, degrees 10 20 30 40 43 and I need another 7 degrees and this is the sign the other way around 7 here then 10 20 30 40 I had 7 that's 47 and another 3 here right so let's keep going like that until you get you know um, you get a better uh, image of that circle over there right now I have three degrees here 13 23 33 43 53 three degrees backward that's the 50 the other way around this is seven degrees keep that one in mind 10 20 30 40 47 another set another three degrees that's gonna be the 50 right if I complete you know this uh, indeed we're gonna have a circle like that right you can go with more points but they're gonna complete this figure right if the distance is too far and you're not able to draw the line leave that one out and we can provide more points for drawing that one there right 
right? So, so far I'm good, but here it's empty. So I wanna place it somewhere here, then I know I can get one point here, right? So here, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. It's sitting here, 50 to the other side, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So it's gonna be here, right? So now I can complete this to that direction and this one here a little bit more when it's sitting somewhere, uh, let's say, yeah, I need it somewhere here, all right? So let's say it's sitting here. So I have two degrees, 12, 22, 32, 42, and this is 50. The other way around, 8, keep that one in mind, 10, 20, 30, 40, that's 48, another 2 degrees, it's gonna be somewhere here. Alright, we can complete this as that one there, and this one, let's say, something like that. If you have more dots, you're gonna have, you know, better estimation. So next we're gonna do with borehole number two. We know the angle between the uh, trend of the borehole, okay, this line, and the pull of the bedding is 25. And I'm going to place that one along the west-east line and count 25. So here I have four degrees. Um, so here, sorry, I have six degrees. Up to here is 26, this is 25. All right, place it here. Another 25, it's gonna be 10, 20, 25, right? And you will see that this new circle, okay, will cross in two locations. Uh, will create two intersection with the blue circle. Let's complete that one. Um, and then I can go from there. So I'm gonna place it uh, here and count 25 this way, 25 this way, and 25 this way, and 25 here, All right? So maybe back to here. And I'm here 6 degrees, here is 25, 4 degrees, this is 25, F 3 degrees, uh, 23, 25, 7 degrees, 27, 2 degrees back, 25, right? So now, you see, I'm, I should be able to complete this something like that so I don't really care about these points here because I'm interested to the intersections um, so somewhere here it's important we're gonna do with the uh, borehole 3 and that's 36, so let's place it on the west-east line and count 36 degrees to each direction. This is 8, uh, 18, 28, 38, 2 degrees back, this is 36. Here we have 2 degrees, keep that one in mind, 10, 20, 30, 32, and this is 36. Uh, this way, uh, 10, 20, 30, 36. The other way around, 10, 20, 30, 36. All right, so as you see, this circle, it's gonna go like that, right? Uh, we don't really need anything here. We are interested to this area because we want to find the intersection of these three uh, circles. So what I'm gonna do, I'll try to place this area uh, and that point along one great circle that's going to give me, you know, um, some extra point to complete the image. So 36 degrees, this is 6 degrees, 16, 26, 36. 
right? Another 36, that's 4 degrees. 14, 24, 34, 36, right? We can count this way. That's 4, 14, 24, 34, 36. This is 6, 16, 26, 36, right? So you can actually get the idea that the intersection it's going to be something like that right if you want you can complete this image but it's not really necessary right so the intersection of these three circles actually are sitting here and i can show it with this point right that's the point in common between all three samples and that's going to be the pole of the bedding that we didn't know the strike and the deep of that right if i uh, draw the profile plane to that point that's going to be the strike and the deep of the bedding uh, that we are interested in so place that pole along the west east line so here i have one degree I will keep that one in mind 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 one degree backward here right so sometimes it is very difficult to follow the same um, great circle if the point is sitting between the great circles in that case i recommend you sign uh, okay the north and south that's gonna help uh, especially for reading the you know the the strike of the uh, of the bedding so let's complete this this is the bedding that these three boreholes reach to that one and then if we want to read the, the strike it's north 10 20 30 38 uh, east and is dipping towards northwest and that would be about 20 30 32 degrees that's the strike and the dip of the bedding that these three boreholes reach to that if you want to write the attitude of the bedding in right hand rule just you know uh, for practice you place these four fingers along the deep direction uh, strike has two ends the thumb shows one of these two ends that should be read uh, for right hand rule so I'm gonna read this one All right. so what you can do you can read you know you can go clockwise and that's 180, 190, 200, 210 218 right 218 slash 32 that is the attitude of the bedding in right hand rule right and the other one it was in quadrant convention all right so uh, by having this answer we are done with this question